Uh, my name is Henning Järv. Uh, I'm currently working on Project Beyonder. In Project Beyonder, Henrik takes us on the adventure of a young fox girl as she battles enemies to find her lost friend. The game is a 2D platformer that harkens back to the games of old such as Mega Man and Metroid. But along the way, Henrik faces challenges he didn't intend on. Like, I, I lost my job uh, during COVID. Join us as we go into the game dev studio of Project Beyonder. Project Beyond Her Story starts two years ago as Henrik sets out to learn more about something he started doing at the age of 10, creating video games. I am addicted to learning and knowing new stuff. And uh, I had this urge to uh, go into doing games again. I used to do it when I was younger. Uh, but for some reason, I stopped doing it for a couple of years. Uh, then I did some small games during my studies. It was really fun. Uh, and then later on, I figured, why not? Why not actually do what I really like? So my game is, uh, it's a platformer. Uh, it's a kind of a merge between the classical Mega Man platformers and uh, or like the Ori type of games or in the Blind Forest such, kind of merging these two uh, genres together. Because uh, I figured when I want to make my game, I I can either do it completely in 3D or I can stick it to two axes up and down. And I figured it's probably best to start out with doing just two axes when I make a game. But it's a story about um, and this fox girl and her friend and uh, her her friend gets abducted by this this enemy force that invades the forest and she figures out that she has to go after and rescue her friend it's a very classical uh, type of story uh, in this game i've always had this urge of the, the classical concept of the Mega Man games where you go in to uh, like you select the level the boss you want to like go at see if you can defeat it and if you defeat it you get this power from the boss and there's been many like variations of of the this genre over the years that at least I feel um, but they, they've not been really kind of straight to the point where you defeated the boss and got it and then you picked a new one to figure out maybe the, the weakness of the next boss so I want to do something more classical in that uh, way and I think there's a lot of people who actually want that I know there's a lot of platforming uh, like fans who really enjoyed Mega Man way back and uh, I think they they want to have something more something maybe different something that adds to that uh, genre uh, it's I, I like to approach it uh, like to do simpler uh, steps before actually jumping into the fray because I've tried it before to do too much and doing too much kind of leads to abandoning projects. So I figured I'll, I'll plan it out to be something that I can do, something I can achieve. And then maybe from that I can make more and more advanced stuff even bigger things because I I think you have to walk before you can run. I believe in when you make something, you can make it with just like boxes. Like if you want to make something like a game idea or a game design concept you and do gameplay around it, you can definitely just use simple shapes to show off what you're trying to do because if if you get that thing that is just boxes to move around and do these fun things moving around then you really you got something there that you just need to put something on top of that works really good like you have a really good base um, because I don't think you should jump in and straight away do really cool graphics 3d models and such because if the, the core gameplay is not good then what's the point of trying to you know hide that with really polished 
graphics because the player is gonna see through that they they know they feel it as instantly when you start playing that game that it's, it's kind of janky or it's not working as you hoped it would uh, so I, I started really simple and uh, and I basically the project was boxes from the beginning and then when I discovered like oh this is actually really fun jumping around with this box doing these wall jumps and wall grabs and such oh great now now I'm halfway there basically uh, and and after that I, I start doing just iterations of, of things like first of all I I tried to figure out what what is the character uh, and I had this idea of this fox girl for this game uh, and I did a very simple one uh, and the one I'm using right now it's definitely not the, the final one because I don't want to go too, too far with it unless I change stuff to it so eventually that character is going to be like it's going to be changed out to a new one to w- what my actual idea is and and these things I start I, I sketch uh in the background of things I don't show on my social media that's like super secret stuff. I do a lot of you know, random gameplay tests to see and sometimes bugs turn out to be features. This game you can, one of the weapons that you can pick up from a boss is a spear. So I didn't put uh, actual cooldown on the spear uh, when you, th- you because you can jump and throw it into the ground and, and when you jump on that spear when it's on the ground you, you get like thrown forward which that was intended but I didn't foresee that you could infinitely do that so you could basically jump and throw another one and continue to bounce on it figured like maybe I can keep some of these things for speedrunners that want to really like go fast at the game uh, and also like for players who like discovers these like small tricks like you could easily just remove it but if it's fun and it doesn't break the game (laughs) sounds really good Um, but I I keep it very simple I don't put any like many colors or textures into my game right now it's mostly about trying to make it play good and when I have a really good base I jump onto the next layer which like kind of refine it a bit kind of get the feeling of uh, the game and there's some levels right now that I have a feeling about the game like how the level should feel and how it should be presented and uh, then I imagine when I'm not right now that the final pass is when I'd actually put in you know final graphics final gameplay stuff into it Uh, so I would say I work in, in layers pretty much and work myself up to that Oh yeah, uh, I think the first and biggest challenge uh, was I've never done a close combat game like swords, melee and such because to be honest, doing shooting stuff is actually really simple when it comes to, to coding and development but like swinging a sword and registering like a hit for me that was like I did not know how to do that but I've always had this like um, feeling like inwards that I can figure it out because nothing is impossible that there must be a solution so I just looked around at at many different um, uh, like tutorials some were really bad someone I didn't even understand I had some stuff that worked, but then I, f- I found this really good example. Henrik is referring to Thomas Brush, the creator of Once Upon a Coma. On his YouTube channel, he does tutorials on video game development. He did some tutorials, really good stuff, and then he released like a small project showing like how he like does like melee combat. And then I like figured, oh, that makes so much sense. And, and I kind of took that approach and made it my own because and it doesn't work one to one like uh, so I have to adapt it to how mine works and uh, eventually it actually started working pretty good so I was like so impressed that it that I made this and yeah th- I think that's the 
was probably the, the biggest hurdle for me, just understanding the combat system itself. There's been a lot of like um, developments during COVID here. Uh, like, first of all, like I, I lost my job uh, during COVID. Uh, even though the company said it wasn't due to COVID, I'm pretty sure it was that in the end. Uh, so that put kind of like, sort of like a depression at first on on me, and and working on a project like that when you're a bit depressed after losing your job and such and trying to find a new job, it's kind of stressful and you don't feel very motivated to work on it, but I'm very stubborn. So I, I try to work through it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it to, to everyone, but uh, it works for me. I enjoy work. So that keeps me sane. Um, I will also say like I was really excited to maybe show off this game to like small indie groups here in Stockholm, Sweden. There's so, that because there's so many um, talents here and many small groups that have these gatherings to show games and and you know talk about games. But due to COVID, you can't really gather and see each other. Henrik started game development due to his love for gaming and his desire to learn. And in creating Project Beyonder, he's learned that you should keep doing what you love. Make stuff. Just make stuff. Because when you make stuff, you learn. It, the stuff you make doesn't need to be the best in the world. But if you make stuff, you learn from it. And if you learn from it, you can make it better the next time. And uh, always try to, you know, do something more advanced the next time. Because the more you do it, the better you get. Uh, and it also comes to like if you if you're a bit shy about showing stuff, kind of put yourself out there. Even though it's not maybe not be the best thing, there's gonna be people who really like it. So. Uh, and it's really it's really hard because all of this that when I put up my dev vlogs uh, or my posts for me it was really it's really hard to show stuff because I'm very uh, critical against my own stuff uh, so showing stuff is really hard for me but this is kind of therapy in a sense to make me understand that it is okay to show stuff not everything is going to be amazing uh, but as long as I show stuff, it's maybe it leads to someone that gets inspired by it. For example, I, I remember seeing Shovel Knight on Kickstarter way, way, way back uh, and, and seeing how they achieve stuff and how, they, how well it's going for them and how people are really enjoying their games. Or for example, right now, if you've ever played the game uh, Valheim, the uh, the new hit game here in, in Sweden. Uh, just seeing uh, the two person studio just building this amazing game that everyone is enjoying right now, it, that really motivates me to be better and uh, really like try to do something that people want to have fun with in the future. Project Beyonder is proof that even though you don't have the budget of a major video game release, you can still put as much heart and passion into the game as any AAA developer. Because at the end of the day, Henrik has a secret weapon that will make his video game great. First and foremost, he's a gamer. Video games to me uh, means uh, happy times. Uh, because uh, I played video games a lot when I was a kid. And I think a lot of people might understand this uh, when I'm talking about it, because uh, when you're a kid, sometimes you are maybe not the most popular person in school. Uh, being a nerd doesn't really help, at least way back when, when I was young. Being a nerd sucked, because <laughs> uh, you didn't have many friends. Uh, and But what really... Uh, helped was video games because they were always there. They were not judging you. You always had fun, uh, and that was something I really enjoyed. 
coming back to when I was done with school, just going back and playing my video games and exploring these worlds, take me away from where I was and such. And uh, I think that's the most important thing with video games for me. It's like it brings me to a happy place uh, where I'm just having fun. Uh, 